Hmm, let's see, Boris. Ha, huh. I think, I think I have a great hand here. Although you do have such a wonderful poker face. Um, hmm, let's see. I think I have a full house. What do you think of that, huh? What? Let's see what you got. Oh. I see. Okay, well, I guess that beats my hand. <laughs> uh, although I do love these wonderful playing cards. <laughs> As you can see, it has someone's uh, admiring face upon them, and, and I, they love to. They, they make such nice coasters, too, you know, for setting your beverages on. <laughs> Ooh, well, good evening, and welcome to Monster Movie Night. I'm your internet horror host, Bobby Gum Monster, along with my co-host and pal, Boris T. Buzzard. Welcome to our wonderful museum, the Monster Museum, Gargoyle Manor. Here, where we have all manners of exhibits, artifacts of the monster world, right, Boris? <laughs> I mean, we have everything from Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman, all the way to the blob itself, although the blob is beginning to get a bit runny nowadays, right, Boris? <laughs> anyway, well, Tonight, dear folks, we have a treat for you. In fact, it is called Night Fright. Not to be confused with Fright Night. No, this was a 1967 American science fiction horror film that was directed by, hmm, let's see, James A. Sullivan. And, uh, and it was shot near Dallas, Texas. Now it stars one of those wonderful old time film actors of the B movies, the one and the only John Agar. Right, Boris? Such a wonderful name, John Agar. It rolls right off the, the tip of your tongue and straight into the swamp of the creatures and such things, right? Anyway. Tonight's film, Night Fright, let's, uh, let us summarize a little bit. Since it was shot near Dallas, Texas, they went ahead and uh, a Texas community is beset by a rash of mysterious killings involving some of the students from the local college. The sheriff investigating the deaths discover the startling identity of the killer responsible for the murders. Hmm. A NASA experiment involving cosmic rays has mutated an alligator into an ogre-like form and bulletproof, unstoppable killing machine with a thirst for blood. You can't get better a better horror film than that. Really? <laughs> so, with John Agar in Night Fright, let us go now to our feature film. Heavens, I just realized where we are. Satan's Hollow, why did we come way out here to park? Just to be alone. Silly, I know that, but why this spooky place? The lake would have been more romantic. Sure, and as busy as a meat market selling 10 cents a day. We interrupt the music to bring you a news bulletin concerning the fiery object that was reported to have crashed in the hills east of town an hour ago. Fiery object? What's he talking about? Shh. Let's hear this. The object, whatever it was, has not been located yet, although state police are combing the area where it was seen to have come down. 
No trace of any wreckage or debris has been found. The old... This is the mysterious crash of farmer and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Stokes, said they were just preparing to retire for the night when they saw a bright flash through their bedroom window. They ran to the window just in time to see what Mr. Stokes described as a giant-sized shooting star dive behind a hill and apparently explode. The witnesses were unable to say exactly how far away the fireball fell, and it is believed that this is the reason the searchers have been unsuccessful in locating it. Stay tuned to the station for further developments as they occur. And now we return to music for your late hour listening enjoyment. What in the world do you think it was? Not from this world, baby. You heard what the man said. It came from the sky. Betty, are you ever serious? Sure, I'm real serious right now about you. with you? Enough, but I'll tell you, Judy, he's not going to do that to me again. That's what you said the last time. Hey, there's Chris. See, he's a little early. Well, I'll see you later. be better right now. You still mad at me, Annie? I never was. I couldn't care less. Yeah, you couldn't. Oh, come on now. You... Oh, hi, honey. Hi, honey. shall we start? How about a nice drive in the country? Oh, just like that, huh? Are you sure you want to go with little me? Or had you rather see the country with Annie? Now, don't be like that. You know that's all over and done with, don't you? Well, I certainly thought so, but I no sooner turn my back and I see you looking up there with those big cow eyes. Oh, I was just talking to her. Now, come on. You know me better than that. Well, you did date her a while, and I suppose it's okay just to talk. But that's all you'd better do, Chris Johnson. <laughs> all right, okay, let's go. <laughs> a loaf of bread and a jug of wine. Gee, we're really in the wilderness. Yeah. Making our coke and bound. We got it made. <laughs> Ew, you dirty young man. Come on, let's get next to nature. <laughs> okay. Mmm, this is nice. Yeah. It's good to get away from everyone sometime. You know, I mean, really get away. It really is. Thanks. Isn't this a spot with a flying saucer landed? Oh, the radio only said a flaming object. It could have been a shooting star or a satellite or anything like that. Okay, boy, so I'd like to think it was a flying saucer with little green men that come to say, take me to your later. <laughs> yeah, later. We'd be all over the newspapers. 
But, but seriously, have you, have you ever thought about, well, sometimes when I'm alone, I think about the things that we don't know about, well, about the sky and the earth and the air and the wind and, well, even this leaf. Well, Chris, I didn't know you were a philosopher. <laughs> you sound just like Professor Clary. Well, I suppose I do. But Clary's lectures have started me to thinking. Like, oh, well, we don't really know what keeps this Earth in orbit or, or what's out there in space. Sometimes when I'm by myself, I... you two out in the boondocks. Yeah, it's so good to see you. We're going down to the beach and have a dance then. You guys want to come along? Uh, no, no thanks, Rog. We'll, uh, we'll see you down there later, maybe. Oh, all right. You two have fun. We'll try. Let's take a walk. You were comparing me a moment ago with Clary. Did I ever tell you about the day that he slipped right off his desk and fell in the middle of the oral? No. How in the world did he fall off his desk? Well, you know the way he, he props himself back on his yeah. uh, spine like he does? <laughs> well, on this particular day, they, well, they had just treated the floors, and he had both feet out in front of him. Both of them slipped and kapow, he fell. <laughs> oh, poor old Professor Clary. I can just see him doing that. Then what happened? Well, well, then he gets up off the floor and adjusts his glasses, you know the way he does, and says completely unrattled, <clears throat> All right, class, now that, now that I have succeeded in fracturing my left fibula, my right tibia, several vertebrae, as well as caving in a portion of my rib cage, <laughs> we might as well continue with the oral <laughs> examination. <laughs> oh, Chris, you sound just like it. <laughs> Judy, you want me to clue you in on something? Sure, why? Do something else when you laugh. I mean, you're special. Mm. Just like the song says, sweeter than wine. Uh -huh. And you'd better not have any more than lava to get back. And remember, you're driving. Come on now, what's with this running off for this long weekend, remember? We don't have to be back in class till next Tuesday. Well, what do you want to do? Spend the next four days out here? Hey, that's the best <laughs> idea I've heard today. Sorry, but I've got to get back home before Mrs. Pierce thinks we've eloped. Hey, that's another good idea. <laughs> big talk. Nothing but big talk. You know you wouldn't get mad if your life depended on it. <laughs>
Well, Clint, was that fiery object that crashed last night what they were looking for? Yep, a rocket. A rocket? One of ours. And would you believe it? Those government boys were already there. How the hell they beat us out here? It beats me how they do it. But I'll tell you one thing. They won't get my vote in any popularity contest. What do you mean? I mean that thing crashed right here in my county and they won't let me near it. Makes me about half sore. I can't say that I believe it. Oh, come on, we're wasting time here. Let's go. Alan. Alan Clayton. Clint Crawford. Or should I say Sheriff Crawford? Oh, Clint will do. How are you, Alan? Fine, fine. Say, I heard you were elected over old Tig Potts by a landslide. Congratulations. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, uh, you haven't met my chief deputy, Ben Whitfield, Professor Alan Clayton. How do you do? Hi, how are you? Fine. Right. Alan was uh, head of the biology department at the university before you came here. But I thought you were over at Cape Kennedy. Well, what are you doing out here today? Hey, uh, is, is that one of the rockets you built and now they're mad at you because it cracked up? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be at all surprised. No, I guess they just figured they had to have an egghead in on the party. Well, I hope you get along with those government boys better than I did. I don't know. Hey, there's a call coming in. Right. Well, I guess your business kind of keeps you hopping, too, doesn't it? Sure does. Well, listen, I've got to get over and see what these government boys want. Say, why don't you come over to the house some night and have a cold beer with me? Well, thanks. I just might take you up on that. Do that, Clint. Nice to see you. Bye, Alan. Yeah. Okay, Pat. We're only about five minutes away from there now. Unit one out. What's up? Pat says it's murder. Where? Satan's Hollow. Dead. The Williams boy is still alive. Ambulance driver said it's hard to tell how bad he was hurt. Sometimes a lot of blood makes it look worse than it is. I sure hope so. Man, did you ever see anything as bad in your life as the way that little girl was chewed up? There wasn't even enough left of her face to identify. I know. I hate to think our folks are going to take it. What kind of a killer could do a thing like that? I wish I knew. What the devil's going on around here, Clint? I went out there where that thing cracked up and those government boys wouldn't let me near the place. Same thing happened to me. Seems it's in my county, but outside my jurisdiction. Now, one of them told me you fellas followed the ambulance down here, so I headed this way. What's going on? Murder, Wes. Girl chewed to pieces, boy barely alive. Who, Clint? Buddy Williams and the Bennett girl. When did it happen? Sometime last night. Any idea who did it? No. No idea. You should have seen that little girl's body. What do you mean? I'll tell you later. Come on, help us look around, Wes. Let me get some pictures first? No, first we try to find some kind of a lead. Okay, where do we start? Then you go north. Buddy, you try that direction. Now, I'll, I'll take the woods. And be careful.
Maybe I found something. What is it? Come and see for yourself. What's happening? What's all the yelling for? West found something. Let's take a look. Now, this is where something came out of the woods onto the road here. And over here, where the ground is soft, it left some tracks. You ever seen anything like this in your life? Nope, can't say as I have. Got any ideas, Ben? Well, I'll tell you what it looks like. A bull gator leaves track something like this. A gator walking on his hind legs? Ben, I said it looks like it, but these are different. They're larger, much larger. Well, the tracks seem to be coming from that direction. Ben, suppose, uh, suppose you backtrack, see what you can find out. I'll follow them, see where they leave. All right, Claire. Well, what about me? Oh, you go back to the car, call Pat, tell him to bring some plaster out here so I can make a moulage of these tracks. Tell him to make it snappy. Right. Oh, and Wes, uh, don't say anything about this to your newspaper, at least not for the time being. Ben, you know I haven't... Look, looked. Wes, I mean it. Okay, Clint, for the time being. You're gonna get run over one of these days, stepping out in front of cars like this. Hi, Clint. Hello, darling. What are you kids doing out here? We heard there was some action out this way last night. Yeah, flying saucer or something, so we thought we'd come out and see it. The state fuzz up the road there wouldn't let us near the place. Well, they had their reasons. Where are you headed now? Out to our cabin to have a barbecue and play some records. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to ask you kids to forget the party and go on back to town. Oh, hold on a minute, Sheriff. Look, I haven't got time to stand here and argue. You'll have to forget the party. I mean it. Now, wait a minute, Clint. Just because you may be my future brother-in-law doesn't give you the right to tell me what to do. No, it doesn't. But being Sheriff does. Oh, now, listen to the big, tough Matt Dillon type. What are you going to do? Give us till sundown to get out of town, Sheriff? <laughs> no. I'm going to give you about one minute to turn this car around and get out of here. Because I'm about to lose my patience. Well, I've already lost mine, Fuzz. Look, punk, don't ever call me Fuzz. When you talk to me, call me Sheriff. Now get out of here.
the devil's wrong with that Bowers kid? Oh, he's just mad because I made him go back to town. Find anything? No. The tracks seem to lead off in the east there, but I lost him here where the ground gets rocky. East, huh? Yeah, they seem to come from the general direction of where that rocket... Uh, say, where the rocket fell. You don't suppose there's any connection between the rocket and this thing that we're... No, I don't see how. Come on, we got work to do. Calls yet? Yeah, one. Pat on his way? Should be here any minute. Good. Clint, bad news. What's that? The Williams kid didn't make it. Oh, that's tough. He was a nice boy. That's too bad. Who's going to break the news to the parents? I'll have to do it. Ben, good arm patrol that river road till I get some state police up here. And don't let anyone near that place. All right. stupid sheriff had to go and blow it. You know, you know, they're all the same. You pin one of those dime store badges on them, and all of a sudden, they're big men from tough town. The nerve of that guy. What is your sister seeing him anyway, darling? It's a long story. He and Bob, you know, Joan's husband, were close friends. They fought together in Korea. Then when Bob was killed and Quinn finally got back, they kind of drifted together. The weird thing is, she's really stuck on him. Boy, are you lucky. Gonna have a real live <laughs> Such a film, eh, Boris? I'm so glad that you dug it out of the catacombs and the vaults way below Gargoyle Manor. It is indeed a wonderful, wonderful film so far, right? <laughs> John Agar. And also starring Bill Thurman, who you might recognize from uh, Curse of the Swamp People, uh, It's Alive, and um, many other films, such as such as the B movie Trade, right? Anyway, good old Bill Thurman. You 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 know who I'm talking about. Anyway, tonight's film starring George, actually, sorry, John George Agar Jr. He was born. Uh, Hmm. January 31st, 1921, died in August, uh, April 7th, 2002, was an American actor, and he's best known for starring alongside of John Wayne in films such as Sands of Iwo Jima, Fort Apache, and She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. Whoa. Well, it seems that... His uh, movie career began after he married a certain uh, American sweetheart. That's right. He married Miss Shirley Temple. And as you can see here at uh, Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, we have everything. Anything and everything to do with any kind of horror movie, B movie, A movie, R movie, X movie, well, maybe not X. But anyway, uh, we have Shirley Temple, one of the uh, dolls that uh, came out when she was just a little romper doing her uh, films way back in the uh, 30s, 20s, 30s, 30s, 40s, in that area dancing on the good ship lollipop and this type of thing. Anyway, she married uh, Mr. Agar, and they married uh, for about five years. That's when his movie career took off. She got him into the movies, and then after, unfortunately, after the marriage sort of ended, uh, well, it didn't say his, his movie career ended because, no, he actually went on to do B-movies, B-horror movies. I mean, he did the likes of um, uh, from, from Tarantula to uh, Tarantula. He did, um, got it right here, and, and Mole People. 
uh, and Brain from Planet Eros. Also, he was in Revenge of the Creature from the Black Lagoon. He went on from there later on, and he did, oh, about 60 other films that he's credited in, either cameos or starring. He was, he was uh, cameoed in the 1976 King Kong. He was went on from there to Attack of the B Movie Monster in 1985. Uh, he also had a cameo appearance in Nightbreed. You may remember Dr. Decker uh, trying to torture information about the night breed out of this old man in the shack. Well, that was John Agar. Uh, he kept going on until his very last film, which was 2005, three years after he had died. So, they may be B movie actors, but they are A number one actors as far as sticking with it keeping in there and continuing on the traditions of frights and other scary sights. Right, Boris? <laughs> so, with that, let us go back to the night's film starring John Agar, affectionately known as Mr. Shirley Temple. Let's go to Night Fright. <laughs> be a minute, Pat. Hi, honey. Aren't you a little early? Uh, Joan, honey, I'm sorry, but... Don't tell me. Our dinner date tonight's canceled. I can't help it. Something real serious came up. I know. I was in an emergency when they brought in those kids. Then, uh, then you saw them? Yes. Clint, what happened to them? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, I'm worried. They say it happened at Satan's Hollow. Darlene went up there this morning with that Rex Bowers. Well, you can stop worrying. I ran into them and told them to come back into town. Which reminds me. Why don't you discourage Darlene from running around with that Bowers boy? He's headed for real trouble. I've talked to her. She won't listen. Well, you better have another talk with her. I'm sorry, honey. I've got to leave. I'll, uh, I'll call you later. Bye, honey. Take care of yourself. You know, when I think how stupid people really are, keeping us away from the lake and blowing our party. I guess they think we're gonna drive out there and load their old rocket in the back seat of your convertible and then make off with it. Haven't you heard they think we're foreign spies? Well, I'm not gonna let the fuzz tell me what to do. I'm gonna wait till it's dark and go out there again. You with me? Yeah, I'm sure. groovy. Well, what do you think? I'm in, but I think we should invite everybody. Yeah, the more people, the crazier the blast. Maybe there's someone we can invite. Who? Chris George. He and Judy probably are looking for something to do. Well, I'll go ask him. Let me out there. Wait a minute. Let Carla ask him. It's her idea. No, she wants to ask him because she still has a big crush on him. Right, Darlene? Shut up, Carla. Hey, what is this, anyway? Why didn't you know? Darlene and Chris had a big item going two years ago. If you don't shut up. Is it true? What about it? Yes, we were engaged once. Why? Well, why didn't you tell me anything about it? You never asked. Hey, man, sit down. Don't, don't blow your cool over some chick. Oh, gee, I hope you didn't get in any trouble with your house, Mother. No, Mrs. Pierce wasn't here when I came in. Oh, that's good. Look, why don't I pick you up about 7 and we'll go for a drive or something? Maybe it'll make you feel better. Well, maybe we'll run into some of the gang and drum up some excitement. Yeah, I guess we have had enough excitement for one day. Okay, we'll do something together. Just the two of us. All right, sweet. Goodbye. Hey, you didn't even talk to him. No need to. I heard him calling Judy. They want to be antisocial. Just the two of them. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. You heard the whole conversation? At least his side. 
Lay it on us, baby. What'd he say? What'd he say? He said what? Well, you can tell him for me, I don't give a damn how undermanaged department is. I need state troopers up here to help me. That's better. Now the state barracks has given me trouble. State police chief's an old friend of Tige Potts. They're probably still sore about your getting Tige's job. Uh, look, Clint, I hate to bring this up right now, but... Wait a minute, Wes. Pat, I want you to call Alan Clayton at the university. Find out if he's available tonight. If you don't find him there, try his home. Pat, you phone the other office, will you? Right, sure. Okay, Wes, now, what were you saying? I was saying that I hate to bring it up right now, but I've got a paper to get out. Now, how long do I have to hold this story? Look, Wes, this involves the welfare and safety of the whole county. If word of this got out right now, no telling what might happen. Clint, I have a responsibility to my subscribers. And I have a responsibility for their safety. Look, all I'm asking you is to keep the lid on in a couple of days. Now, how about it? All right. I might as well go back to the office. Uh, Wes, this is for the state crime lab. Drop it off for me, will you? Sure. Anything else? No, that's all. Now, don't forget to drop it off. I want the lab to get on it right away. Don't worry. I'll uh, see you later. Sheriff, I've got the professor on the line. You want to speak to him? Thanks, Pat. Hello, Alan. I got a puzzle you might be able to help me with. you're here. Well, what's the matter? You're shaking. It's simply gotten to me, Chris. Nothing like this has ever happened before. You gotta pull yourself together. I mean, going to pieces won't help matters any. But what are we going to do? Well, we are not going to do anything except try to get ourselves back to normal. Let's get something to eat. Oh, I don't think I can eat anything. But I'll try. Okay. Hamburgers and Cokes, I guess. You're on your way to the blast, too. What blast? What are you talking about? The beach party. Rex and Darlene and some of the others just left. Said they were going to the lake. Chris, they don't know what danger they're in. Oh, they'll be all right. The cops will never let them get near the place. What if they sneak in? You know how stubborn Rex is. No, I don't. I'm not as well acquainted with him as you are. Oh, Chris, don't be juvenile. Look, Judy, I could care less what happens to Rex Bowers. What about Darlene and the others? I think you should call Sheriff Crawford so they can notify the officers out there to watch for them. If any of them were to get hurt or killed, we'd never forgive ourselves. All right. Nah. Most of them over by Satan's Hollow anyway. Glory in heaven. 
The sheriff isn't in his office. Did you try Darlene's sister? Yeah, but she had already left the hospital. I called her house and she isn't there either. Okay. We'd better go to the lake and tell the gang to stay away from there. Whatever you say. Hey, what about your order? seen anything quite like it. Why do you say that? Well, it does have some familiar characteristics, but uh, there are also certain differences. Differences? From what? Like from an alligator print. That's what this impression resembles. Strange. That's what Ben said. And you say you tried to follow the tracks? Yeah. Yeah, but we lost them on hard ground. Hmm. Say, how about a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I'm on duty. You don't mind if I have one, do you? Be my guest. Sheriff's office. Deputy Lynch speaking. Oh, hi, Joan. No, he isn't here right now. He drove over to Lanesburg to Professor Clayton's house. Yeah. Then 
then, uh, then you're not sure what kind of animal made that track. No, but I'd like to study the moulage a little longer. All right, Alan, but I need to know something as soon as possible. Right. I'll try and let you know something by morning. Fine, I'd appreciate it. Good night, Alan. Good night, Clint. calling base. Unit one calling base. Pat, I'm leaving Professor Clayton's house, headed for Satan's Hollow. Unit one out. Joan Scott. Is Chef Crawford there? No, he, uh, he just left. Oh, I missed him at the office, too. Well, thank you anyway. Come on, Sam! Come on, Sam! 
Here's a great new instrumental by the Wildcat. Another climber for our top 40. Now, if you can't want to eat the swing in this place in town, hey, we someone's wreck. coming. Chris and Judy. What are you doing out here? I came to tell you to take your party somewhere else. What, and leave here? You're sick, man. With everybody, anyhow. That's all we heard all day long. Get away from here. Stay away from here. It's beginning to sound like a broken record. We have as much right here as anyone else. Look, I'm telling you this for your own good. Well, I'm fed up taking orders, lover boy. You go take your advice and peddle it somewhere else. Now listen, Rex. No, you listen. Nobody invited you and little Miss Sunday School out here. This is our private blast, and if you don't dig it, split. I'm just trying to help I you. I said split. Look, buddy, don't push me. <laughs> All right, I'm telling you for the last time, and you'd better take my word for it. You're in a lot of danger if you stay here. End of advice. Come on, Judy. You okay, honey? I'm beginning to get too cold for comfort out here anyway. Yeah, gang, why don't we go over to Mitch's house? He has a heated swimming pool. Yeah, come on, let's go over my pants. Coming, Rex? Well, you can't go ahead and split if you want to. I'll leave here when I get good and ready. Yeah, but you got the wheels, remember? So ride with Mitch. Hey, don't get touchy about it. Come on, Carla. What about you, darling? I'd better stay with Rex. to make it well. I thought your sister was the only nurse in your family. Mm-mm. Says you're wrong, you can be. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
car, quick! My boys, looky here. Werewolves, ghosts, vampires, witches. Ah, such stories this year book has. Hmm. Tonight's feature, Night Fright, has so many interesting ideas about monsters in it. But you know, a good book is almost as good as a good film. And uh, such books as these can be most informative, especially about uh, the uh, supernatural world. Mm, right, Boris? Uh, Boris and I, we like to go to the old library over once in a while and find a good book like this and uh, bone up, as they say, so that we can uh, uh, be fresh with uh, new blood and ideas for our show, Monster Movie Night, uh, so that we can bring to you these wonderful, uh, thrilling, chilling, and interesting shows such as, well, tonight's feature, Night Fright. <laughs> this is such an interesting, let's go back and watch the film and uh, we'll, uh, well, we'll, we'll check some more of this book out a little later after we watch some of the film. Hmm? Let's go. He didn't hurt you, did he? No. Well, I still don't know a lot about it, but I think we should have told them. Maybe you're right, but the sheriff told us not to say anything, remember? At least anyway, I tried. Oh, Rex will never listen to anyone. But I guess the sheriff knows what he's doing. I sure hope so. the sheriff's car. I don't see anybody around. I think I'll take a look. Wait, Chris. Don't leave me. Okay, come on.
Don't, Judy. Don't look. What is it? It's Ben Whitfield. He's dead. Oh, Chris, let's get out of here. Chris! 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 Judy! Sheriff Crawford! What happened to you? Never mind. Where's Ben? In the car. Let's get back to town. Yes, sir. I don't care how short-handed you are. I need more men. You sent me two men to patrol that whole area. Some kids slipped past him last night, and one of the kids was killed. Now, what am I supposed to tell his parents? That their state patrol couldn't spare the men? No, I need at least 20 men. Then they'll be there in an hour. Fine. Pat, come here. I want you to go out there and meet those troopers. See, they cover every road leading in there. That one, that one, and the Satan's Hollow Road. I want that whole area sealed off. Got it? Right. Then hop to it. I'll be along later. Yes, sir. Honey, how's Darlene? She'll be all right. I left her at my aunt's house with a doctor. Poor kid was in shock. All the way home, she just sat there beside me, as rigid and motionless as a, a mannequin. Well, shouldn't you be with her? I mean, there's no... What did you say? About Darlene? No, no, the part about the mannequin. Clint, I don't understand. Just a minute, honey. Rosette, Lyle speaking. Clint, you got anything I can print yet? No, not yet. But there is something you can do for me that could get you the biggest story you've ever printed. Now, I want you to get in touch with Maury Stern. He won't be at his store this late. But I'm sure you can find him at... Okay, I'll take care of that for you. Goodbye, Wes. Alan! I didn't expect you here tonight. Yeah, well, after some consideration, I thought I'd better talk to you again. Uh, could I speak with you alone? Well, sure. Joan, if you and the kids don't mind. We'll get a cup of coffee. All right, Alan. What's on your mind? Well, Clint, I'm afraid I wasn't being entirely honest with you earlier this evening. To tell you the truth, as soon as I saw that moulage, I had an idea what that creature was. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I'll try and explain. When I was at Cape Kennedy, I was involved in space research. Well, it was top secret work, so naturally there were some people I had to check with before I could give you any information. Then what you're saying is that this creature, or whatever it is, is connected with the government space program? I believe so. You see, we were involved in a project called Operation Noah's Ark. The purpose of the project was to try to ascertain the effect of cosmic radiation on live animals. Well, we sent a rocket further out into space than any rocket containing life had ever gone. It contained over 40 different kinds of animal life. But when it got 300,000 miles out, which is well beyond the moon, we lost contact. Well, after about three months, we abandoned hope and gave it up for lost. And then suddenly, last night, one of our tracking stations picked it up again as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the thing that was strange about it was the length of time it had been gone. Almost six months. Then what happened? Well, you know the rest. That was it that fell outside of town last night. That's why they wouldn't let anybody near it. And that's why they brought you out there? Then I can't begin to describe the horror of what we found inside that wreckage. I'll never forget the sight of those horrible mutations. They were still alive? Some of them were. The rest of them had been eaten by something huge. Yeah, yeah I ran into that something earlier this evening. It almost killed me. It's killed four times already. 
It's not going to kill again if I can prevent it. Chris, you and the girls can come in now. Chris. Yes, sir. Your, uh, your father owns a construction company, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Here's a list of things I need. Can you get them for me? Sure, no sweat. Okay, meet me at the West Shore intersection as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Hey, Chris, wait for me. Well, Clint, have you got a plan? Yep. You ever go duck hunting? Duck hunting? Well, sure. Then you know about decoys. Mm-hmm. Would you mind making it a little bit clearer? On the way out there. Joan, I'll drop you off at your aunt's. No, I'm going with you. I'm not staying behind not knowing what's happening to you out there. I'm going, and that's final. All right, come on. State troopers have all roads covered. The area is completely sealed off. Good. Past 11. You ought to be here. Here he comes now. coming. Area sealed off tight in a drum. Fine. How about you, Wes? Get everything? Everything but uh, one. John! Honey, I hate to ask you this, but there's one small favor you can do for me. Now, Wes, you got everything except one up. I'm late, Sheriff, but some of the stuff was hard to find. Okay, Chris, put it in Weiss's car. Chris? Yeah? Why did you bring Judy with you? Why didn't you take her back to her dorm? Well, I didn't want to delay you. I, I thought you wanted the stuff right away. All right, you stay in the car with her. Yes, sir. Everybody, move out!
I bet Maury Stern never thought one of his mannequins would end up as a booby trap, huh? <laughs> You all right, honey? Yeah, except for my favorite uniform being blown to pieces. I'll buy you all the uniforms you want. Night Fright. <laughs> what a movie. Hmm, Boris? We say it every week, but we mean it every week. What wonderful scares there were back in the 60s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 20s, 1800s. Hmm. <laughs> so glad the invention of the projector and the film of cameras making horror films available to us, especially through now DVDs, the internet, bringing it right to your very own living room uh, or any other place that you choose to view it. Right, Boris? Just like our own show, Monster Movie Night. <laughs> mm, I'm telling you, it left me with a feeling of euphoria goosebumps running all the way down the spine. <laughs> A wonderful pick this week, Boris. Thank you very much. And thank you out there very much for tuning in to Monster Movie Night and watching myself and dear Boris every and each time for every episode of Monster Movie Night. So, until next time, keep screaming.